Well, good morning, church. It is April 29th, and I am pre-recording this on April 28th for you. Um, this is actually my second take at this because the first time, for some reason, I didn't hit the button right, and it didn't record. And so here you go, round two. Hopefully, it'll get better as we go forward. We're looking at Psalm 119 this morning, and really wanted to just take time and work this through with you as a church. There's 21 sections, a section for each letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Um, it was used as an acrostic to help kids learn to memorize this psalm and then to teach them how to love the law of God. And when we talk about the law of God, we're not just talking about the Ten Commandments. We're talking about all the good things that God gives us in His Word. That is what we refer to then as God's law. So listen to what it says here in the first uh, eight verses of Psalm 119. It says, Blessed are those whose way is blameless and who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies and who seek him with their whole heart. So just this afternoon I was filming for uh, the kids program on the book of Isaiah. And I talked about this idea of false worship and how false worship was those that came and put on a good smile and good clothes, but their hearts were far from God. And because their hearts were far from God, God said he detested the way that they would come to church and sing and offer sacrifices. He said it was, it was something that he could not continue with and that it was going to cost them judgment to be exiled from the promised land. And so here the psalmist says, hey, listen, God, help me to love you with the whole heart. Who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways, that have commanded, you have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame. Having my eyes fixed on all your commandments, I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous laws. And so, as we continue to work through each and every day of our life, but right now in this season that we're in, um, still like unknown what's going to take place, how do we walk and move forward as a believer? And the psalmist would say, well, easy. You walk still in obedience to God's word. You just learn what God's word tells you to do, and you go and do it. Because this right here is the true source of life. It's the true source of joy. It's the true source of happiness. It is really what brings blessing to a person is to then live out the things of God. And so he says, hey, go and do these things so that you would find joy, find hope, find life, find peace. And your wholehearted worship will bring glory to God. And so the psalmist finishes off in verse 8 saying, I will keep your statutes. Because I believe this to be true, I am resolving to now do this, to keep your statutes. And that is what we have to do, isn't it, as a believer? We have to resolve in our heart and our mind, you know what, God, because you loved me, I am going to love you. And, and how do I show that I love for you? I do it by keeping your commandments. I do it by obeying your law. So God, help me to do that. And he finishes saying, not only will I keep your statutes, but God, do not utterly forsake me. And he says, I need your help because I know that I'm not perfect. I know I'm still a sinner. In verse 5, he had said, oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. I'm realizing, God, that I, I still struggle in life. And so since I still struggle, I'm asking you to help me do what is good, do what is right, walk in obedience to your word, because I know that it will bless my life. Now, throughout years uh, in our history, people have memorized Psalm 119. And I want to challenge you to come along and memorize Psalm 119 with me over the next 21 weeks. That we would take time and memorize it in these sections. Um, and as people have done that, they found it to be a blessing to them. Uh, listen to this story by John Ruskin. John Ruskin was not a minister, not a theologian. He was just a young child whose mom challenged him to memorize. Well, I don't think she just challenged him. I think she made him memorize Psalm 119. And so here's what he says about it. He says, it was this passage that cost me the most to learn, and of which, in my childishness, it was repulsive. 
He said, I didn't, I didn't like it when I was a kid having to memorize this one. He said, but now it has become the most precious to me in its overflowing and glorious passion of love for the law of God. He said, there's something about it that just brings my heart peace and joy. I can tell you my grandpa, um, he, as he got older, had to go into for surgery. And as he was going into surgery, he started quoting Psalm 23. And the nurses and doctors were just amazed because they said they watched how it bring a peace to him and how it just gave him rest in his life. And so church, let me encourage you, memorize this with me, Psalm 119. Memorize God's word because it is good for us. But then let us be resolved to go and do God's word and walk in obedience to it. Not because it earns us salvation, not because it makes us this amazing person on our own, but because it is what is glorifying to God, it is what is right, and it is what is good. And as we do it, we will find joy, peace, and blessing that God will pour out on our lives. So may the Lord bless you, and may he help you to walk in obedience to his word all your days. We'll see you soon.